Uh, I just want to say for all of you that are here, it has been just great. I mean, it's taken a long time, like 10 plus years to make this happen. But it's because of all of you that this has been possible. Uh, I, j I don't want to do too many thank yous, uh, but I want to introduce uh, Philip Stone, who is the treasurer of the board. Philip and I came in here at the same time when this place was falling around, and when you open the doors, it fell off its, they fell off their hinges. Yeah. Uh, he even got threatened by one of the staff people at Booker T to beat him up and grabbed him up in the counter. <laughs> but, I mean, so that's what it's been like. But the, the three of us, uh, including uh, Larry Griffin, who is our uh, board chair, have been around this project for a long, long time now. Uh, what we really ended up doing is having really great supporters like Alice Barkley. Where is that girl? Uh, Alice represented us legally pro bono for years and years and years. <laughs> Outside of saying, Pat, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, just do what I tell you to do and you'll be all right. Uh, Philip, Philip wanted to say just a, a brief word before we introduce um, our incredible mayor, Mayor Edley. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to all of you for coming. Um, I just want to, um, Larry will introduce the board of uh, directors, but I just want to tell you what the program is going to be. The, we're going to introduce the board of directors and some uh, Mayor Lee, Willie Brown, John Burden, London Bree, and Kevin Kilburn will give a few statements. After that, there will be a ceremonial ribbon cutting outside. So for those of you that want to take pictures of the ribbon cutting, before it starts, you should go outside. <laughs> it's, it, it's a better picture from outside than inside. Uh, the other thing is, is that there are people you see with these uh, name tags that are uh, typed. The, that's part of our staff and that's part of our board. If you have any questions whatsoever, talk to them, pull them aside, and test them. <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah, they, I hope they read their cheat sheets. Um, okay. And I give you Larry Griffin, president. Good afternoon, folks. And, and again, thank you, everybody that's here. I mean, uh, this whole project was a community effort. It wasn't just one or two people. It was a lot of people led by Philip and by Pat. So uh, our board members that are here today, our vice president is Carlos Reed. Carlos. He's also the athletic director for Drew that uses our gym quite frequently. Andrea Patton Housley is here. She's here. She's in the house. Andrea. And there's one person I cannot forget to mention, and that's Farrah Macris. Um, yes, that's an incredible member of our board. Uh, we do have a couple of people missing today. However, we have a couple of more folks here. Yoonji Tom is here. Hmm? Yoonji is here. Yes, uh, uh, is here. Yoonji uh, worked here for a long time as a youth counselor. This is Yoonji Tom right here. Um, Yunji has been absent for a while now because she's in medical school at UC Davis. And she will be coming back to us as Dr. Tom one day. That's right. That's right. Yes. Um, Adam is not here. That, I think, Eric. is it. Eric is here. Oh, Eric Sapphire. Where is he? Oh, Eric, my God. Come on up here. Eric is... Uh, uh, I, this is really a good thing to see Eric, folks. Yeah. How are you, brother? Okay. Um, no, no, you still have Shelly. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shelly Bradford Bell. Do I need to say anything about Shelly Bradford Bell? I don't think so. I think most folks know the Bell. <laughs> okay. And that's it, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Folks, um, according to my speaker's list here, I have the honor of introducing somebody who has been 
behind our project, I'd say about 125%. And that's Mayor Ed Lee. Can we get a round of applause for him? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Larry, Pat, and Phil. I remember being here when we turned the spade of dirt, and it's been a long, long time, but you're all still here for the ribbon cutting. But I also remember Art Agnos, John Burton, Willie Brown. They're here, and we're still here to turn over the dirt. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Uh, it's taken a while, it's taken too long for the purpose that was set out by the community, uh, by people that have been working with Board President London Breed for way too long to wait for this because some of the youth we wanted to serve, they're adults now. You know, we still got more to do. This is only 50 units, but, and it took a long time, and it's one of those examples well, if we got something important, we ought not to have lawsuits stop them. And so we got to do better as a city if we're going to serve our community better. But Booker T has been there from day one for generations. And I want to say, Booker T, thank you for doing all your good work. All the good work. So, so before someone accuses me of being too long, I'm going to say thank you to everybody. I know it was a barrage of different sources of money, not just the city, not just equity, not just Don Stewart, not just the state, not just Raymond James, not just Citibank, all of them working together for the funding. Lots of people putting this together as both housing, Tay Youth, Service Center, all the things. But I'm looking forward to the programs and the young people that will come through whose lives will be touched and changed so that when they say they were part of Booker T, they're a part of the city, they're part of the future. This is San Francisco. Love and compassion for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Supervisor Breed has reminded me that we have not told everybody what this project is. <laughs> <laughs> we have 50 units of housing half for young people that have aged out of foster care or are at risk of homelessness. So those 25 units, more than half of them are filled now. We also have 24 units uh, at 50, 60 percent average median income. That means the rent is about $1,000 a month. And they got views of the whole city. I just had somebody offer to buy one of those units for $800,000. <laughs> It was Rick, ah, that's right, that's exactly who it was. So, um, and we have, for those 24 units, we had 1,300 applications. So the housing situation here, particularly for young people and for poor people is really acute. And I will definitely be on hand uh, tomorrow when uh, Mayor Lee signs the CEQA legislation because it's absolutely needed. And uh, it, there's nothing else I can say about it. We have to cut through the red tape so we can create more housing for the people that live here. Our kids can't afford this. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, so I want um, now to enter, what? The community center, London is on me again, man, about not explaining stuff. <laughs> We have, we have a community center that now has youth radio studios. So we'll have the San Francisco Bureau of Youth Radio over here eventually. But right now we have a media and tech center. We have child care. Chibi Chan is organizing the child care. They opened two weeks ago. And it's great to see these little two-year-olds running around this place, which we had never seen before. Uh, we've got another playground um, that was, that was uh, built by the parents and the children. They designed it, and it was built with the help of Lucasfilm and Disney. We have a full NBA gym that can be divided into two smaller gyms. Uh, we are in partnership with Drew School. Drew School came to our rescue because we had to have an unencumbered site in order to build this. And we had a half million dollar mortgage at 10% interest. And Drew paid it off. Yeah. 
So we continue to do what we've always done, which are programs, vocational programs for young people and after school programs for those young people between the ages of five and 18. We have a mind body health center now in addition to the gym and we have a music studio. So we're ready to go. The other thing we do is we teach cycling. <laughs> and we have 50 bicycles and we have a cycling center downstairs. We teach kids how to navigate the streets of San Francisco and we teach them how to do minor repairs. You will notice that the two principal things we have, cycling, which is, which is one of my passions, and radio, which is another one, are here in this center. I'm sorry about that, but that's, that, <laughs> that's how that happened. Yes. Wait, yes. Hold on to We're gonna do some oh, we wanted to also point out that we have some elected officials here today. And other than the president of the Board of Supervisors, we have Supervisor Jeff Sheehy here with us today. And we also have State Senator Scott Weiner. Thank you both for joining us. Okay. Well, it's hard to introduce a man with blue suede shoes. But it can be done. And uh, I'd like to ask former mayor, former speaker of the assembly, Mr. The Honorable Willie Blue Suede Shoes Brown to join us. Up here. Let me also thank all of you who waited so long and put in so much time and energy. I think that the evolution of Booker T. Washington Community Center into the facility that was described by Pat a moment ago and including clearly the 50 units of housing, the advent of John Burton being as dedicated as he has been for multiple chores, he assumed the responsibility a long time ago on behalf of all of the elected types to do something about kids who reached 18 years of age and who were then set of free, allegedly, but without the kind of support and services needed to allow them to grow into full adults. John has undertaken all of that, and to acknowledge that here at Booker T. Washington is a good thing. Some of you may or may not know, but Booker T. Washington Community Center was exactly two blocks from where I lived. I lived at 2547 Sutter, apartment 326, right here in the west side housing, uh, public housing, that's right down the way. My uncle had the rental arrangement, and, and in those days, nobody checked, and so he had, he had some other relatives living there with him. And I was one of those other relatives living there with him. And Booker T was where you'd go. I then, of course, you know, over the years, um, morphed into being a participant in lots of things around the city, and I started to coach a, a, a team, a little basketball team. We called it the Globetrotters, and uh, it was, I mean, it was a great team. We clearly won games at every community center, whether we played the Cats at Booker T, whether we played the ones at Buchanan, whether we played the ones at Cannon Kip, all over town, and that was because they did not realize but we would do what, you know, clever guys do. I'd go to Washington and get the best player out there. I'd go to Mission and get the best player out there. I, would all, I, I put together all the best players. Leroy Doss was the number one player. He played center on the team. So I hung out here at Booker T. John will remember, and probably Agnos as well, and that was the only re alive black Republican in the world ran Booker T. Center, and his daughter and his son. Um, and, and, and it was amazing how uh, this town was designed and orchestrated by some incredible people, and black people participated fully. Jim Stratton did just that exactly here, and he was Booker T. Washington Community Center Executive Director. A mean some bitch, but he was okay in every way. Oh, in every way. So Booker T really 
was and literally is in the cornerstone. When in college London, uh, the organizations called, uh, I guess you'd call them Alpha, Kalpa, all of, the, all of us, this is where we played. When there was a fraternity league going, Booker T was where we did exactly that. We didn't know anything about all those people living out in Hunters Point. They were foreigners. We didn't bring them over here because we had a black community that was incredible, and Booker T was near the center of that black community, and it was just a wonderful thing. And to now have it redone, to have it the way in which it needs to be for this day and age, just I'm telling you, it is a godsend. And as Mayor Lee said, it's also instructional. All the rest of San Francisco can now look, every district can look and see what you can do with the right kind of resources, with the right kind of leadership, and the right kind of dedication in a city that is dedicated, I think, to facilitating. And Booker T suffered through all those years and all those approvals and all those things. All the other places can learn from Booker T and do it with greater speed, but not with any more love. Thank you. As, as most of you know, or if you don't know, this center is kind of broken into two parts. We have our community center on the far right over here, and then we have the housing complex, which is where everybody is here, where our 50 units of housing are. And those 50 units of housing are named after a gentleman by the name of John Burton, who uh, I've known since I was just knee high. Um, but he was just knee high then too, right? He wasn't an adult yet. But uh, this is the John Burton housing complex that was funded uh, largely by the John Burton Foundation, and we'd like to have John come up and say a few words. Please, sir. And while John's on his way up, I'd like to mention that Rick Mariano is here, who is the president of the board of directors of the John Burton Foundation. Uh, th thanks a lot, Larry. Uh, I would like to uh, first thank uh, our board members, Ricky Mariano, who played a big role because he knows development and trying to help Pat through some of the snake pit stuff that they go through, including the fact that one of the city agencies was not going to elect, wasn't, wasn't the mayor's office. And he told us that. I was giving him the heat. It wasn't him. But they were not going to, they would not let us park cars there because there was a little piece of paper that hadn't been signed. And Pat's very polite. I would have said like, well, you know, screw him. Let him tow the mayor's car away and see how the guy gets his job. But Ricky Mariano and uh, our, there she is. Who? Who else is here? Well, who? So oh, yeah, Sammy Tabahoff and I had a stroke, man. I don't remember shit. Uh, anyway, our executive director, Amy Lemley. But this this is a great thing. And as Willie was talking about, I was like a YMCA kid, and our headquarters was down in the Tenderloin. But we came up and played basketball at Booker T. Uh, who's probably most famous guy was uh, Casey Jones. Uh, Trouble Mayfield, Willie will remember. There was Westside Christian Church had a gym. First United Presbyterian had a gym. A lot of churches had gyms where young kids could play. And it doesn't happen anymore. And the rebirth of this is just a really great thing. And I'm so happy uh, that we could be part of it because this is going to be a real community center, and I believe after the neighbors around here, and Pat will tell you how many were supportive and how many weren't, but when people, no, I don't know that much, but people that will see what can happen when a community gets together and does something for young people, it improves the community, it doesn't do damage to the community. And as the mayor's housing programs go, 
uh, where there's commitments to do something uh, to build housing, putting in $100 million, Daniel Lurie, to build homes, not for homeless people, but for people that do not have homes. And there's a big difference. So I'm proud that we were part of this. And, you know, uh, known Larry, worked with his, you know, Pop uh, Herman and Will Ussery going back to the core days. And uh, I see Senator Weiner who took over my district twice removed, I think I was. So thank you for being here. And uh, you've been introduced, Jeff? All right, I don't have to introduce Jeff Sheehy again. So again, Larry, thank you. And Pat, I mean, you went through a lot of shit to make this happen. And well, let's hear it for her. Folks, I, there was, folks, there was one very important former elected official here that I've, I'm sorry I forgot to introduce, but we have Mayor Art Agnos with us today. Uh, talk about going through shit. We had to really seriously deal with a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of policies that didn't necessarily conform to what I saw should be happening. And so I had a lot of dog fights with a lot of different people. And one of them that I had a dog fight with who has been totally supportive, I just saw him, Olson Lee. There he is down there. Uh, I'd like to now introduce our supervisor, Supervisor London Breed, who is also president of the Board of Supervisors. Good afternoon, everybody. Today is a day for a celebration. And I gotta say, you know, this feels like a coming home to me. When I, not too long ago, when I was 14, <laughs> this was where I came when you were working in the Mayor's Youth Employment and Training Program. So my first job, I had to come here in the gym and do my orientation to get paid. And what's interesting is you learn about the city because they're paying you, so you have to sit there and listen. And you learn about people like Willie Brown and John Burton and Art Agnes and their history here in the city and trying to change policies in order to make our city better. And I never thought that here today we would be celebrating something so incredible that you all laid the foundation for us to do. So I just want to pay respect and love to the work that you've done your entire careers to make things like this happen for our great city. It it is amazing, it's beautiful, and what's even more amazing about this place is we have been able to use our neighborhood preference legislation for the affordable housing here. And I gotta just say, Ron Kane, my buddy right here, born and raised in this community, now lives in this community, and I couldn't be more proud for the work that we've been able to do to make that happen. You know, it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and I just want to acknowledge the board of directors. I definitely want to acknowledge Olson Lee and Kate Harley from the Mayor's Office of Housing for the work you've done to be creative about funding, including the $10 million the city put in it and the tax credits. I want to thank Jeff Kaczynski, who's here with the Mayor's Office of Homelessness for helping us choose the people and, and, and make sure that we support the most at-risk young people to get the opportunity to get the services and the housing that they deserve in this this community. I mean, this center is absolutely amazing. I did a walkthrough and was almost in tears thinking about this incredible opportunity for the next generation of young people and how this place will continue to change lives for generations to come. And it wouldn't have been possible. It wouldn't have been possible without two people that I got to point out. First of all, Philip, and I think, I don't know where he went. There you go. Philip Stone, his family, his family, his family has been a part of this center, blood, sweat, and tears, since it was founded over 98 years ago. And he is still involved, and he is still doing everything he can to 
take care of this place. And so Philip, on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, the mayor and I, I took the mayor's proclamations and decided to put my name on there. Oh wait, too soon, too soon, okay. <laughs> On behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, I just want to commend you and thank you so much for your support and love for Booker T. Washington Community Center. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, if I get one more phone call from this woman, it would be too many. Too many phone calls, and every time, the call was always about the children, always about Booker T, always about what she needed to take care of this community. And you know what, Pat? People doubted you. I don't know where you went. They doubted that you would get this project done. You went, you shook money off trees, you contacted everybody under the sun, you made magic happen over the years to get this thing done. And Pat, we love you, we appreciate you, we thank you. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm tired. I'm going to retire. Well, you know what, Pat? There's still work to done. And Pat has done an amazing job in creating the next generation of leaders that will continue to make sure that this community center is working for this community and thriving. Jerry and Lakeisha, they're here still after many, many years being groomed by Pat for the next generation. So I just want to say thank each and every one of you. The work and the love that has gone into making this place happen is a reality. This is what we can do when we come together as a city to make beautiful things happen. This is what's going to change the next generation, and this is what's going to change our country. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you. Obviously going to miss a lot of people to thank, but I do really need to thank the team that put this building together, the architects. We started out, uh, uh, Stephen Perry, are you here? And Dirk worked on the project and religiously went to all of these meetings and changed things and took the blame for things that didn't work. And it's gonna take a lot more blame when we finish looking around and see what else doesn't work. Punch list. Uh, the, yeah, the punch list. Um, but at any rate, um, Equity Community Builders has been our, our, our developer in this project, and I have worked tirelessly to make this happen, even though um, uh, Kim, Kim Nash, would you raise your hand, please? Though Kim got one of Pat Scott's uh, hanging up on you because uh, <laughs> something didn't actually work right. Um, it has been really phenomenal to work with folks. Uh, Fisher Development came in when our developer quit on us. And they've been here with this project. And so we still have a lot more work to do with Fisher too. So this project isn't complete, um, but we will have it complete very soon. Right now, we're going to do a ribbon cutting, and then I want you to explore this new facility. Our staff will take you to see some of the apartments, and you're free to roam around and look at what's going on here. Particularly take a look at the playground and Chibi John, because now we can um, fill a really great need in this community, which is childcare for those two to five. And it's great to look out the window and see these little kids climbing all over everything. So the story is, we are a community now. We, we saw this as a community that needed to come together, especially with the African-American population hovering less than 3%. When I first got out of school in the mid-70s and came here, it was closer to 15%. And what we have left is a very vulnerable population, and we have to fix that. That's our responsibility. We have to make our young people whole so that they can survive in this society. And that's where we are with this. And so with that, uh, let's go through to the ribbon cutting, and then you can get to tour the facility. Thank you all very much for showing.
No, he's gone.